Tracheal intubation is a routine procedure in the intensive care unit and is often life-saving. In contrast to the control conditions in the operating room, critically ill patients with respiratory failure and shock are physiologically unstable. These factors along with a suboptimal evaluation of the airway and limited oxygen reserves despite adequate pre-oxygenation are responsible for a high incidence of life-threatening complications such as severe hypoxemia and cardiovascular collapse during tracheal intubation in the ICU. It is necessary to implement an intubation protocol during routine airway management in the ICU. Adherence to a plan for difficult airway management incorporating the use of intubation aids and airway rescue devices and strategies is useful. The All India Difficult Airway Association has proposed a stepwise plan for safe management of the airway in critically ill patients. Our agenda today is to briefly review the algorithm and familiarize with the key decision making strategies. Welcome once again to Anesthesia Tools. Most conventional tests used at predicting difficult airway focus on anatomical features that make glottis visualization difficult and are difficult to perform in patients requiring emergency intubation. When it comes to predicting difficult intubation in the ICU, more indices would come into play, for example, physiological factors and operator experience in airway management. The Makocha score has been recently developed to identify patients with potentially difficult airway in the ICU. The presence of a modified malampathy class 3 or 4 scores 5 points. History of obstructive sleep apnea scores 2 points. Cervical immobility 1 point. Limited mouth opening 1 point. Coma or GCS less than 9. Severe hypoxemia. A non-anesthesiologist operator scoring 1 point each. The score thus has a maximum of 12 points with 0 predicting an easy intubation and 12 points predicting a very difficult one. <music> Studies suggest that the presence of an experienced operator during airway management and supervision of junior doctors performing intubation by a senior consultant can help reduce complications during tracheal intubation in the ICU. Oxygen desaturation is the most common complication occurring during intubation in the ICU and is the most common reason for aborting intubation attempts. Therefore, proper pre-oxygenation is important to prolong the time to desaturation during intubation and increase the chance of first attempt success at intubation. Three minutes of pre-oxygenation using non-invasive positive pressure ventilation delivered by an ICU ventilator using a face mask is more effective at reducing desaturation than by face mask with bag and reservoir. Hemodynamic stability is an independent predictor of death following intubation. Preparedness and prompt treatment of post-intubation hypotension with masopressors and further fluid therapy are important. Drugs such as etomidate and ketamine are preferred to propofol or thiopendone in ICU. Other agents such as opiates, dexmedetomidine and lignocaine can be used as adjuncts to blunt the sympathetic response to laryngoscopy. Most of the ICU patients are considered to have a full stomach and securing the airway with a rapid sequence intubation seems logical. Cricoid pressure should be given but may be partially or completely released if ventilation is inadequate. Intermittent positive pressure ventilation may be performed using bag valve mask with reservoir bag using external peep valve set to 5 to 10 centimeters of water peep if available 
or IPPV using the ventilator maintaining a cricoid pressure throughout. If face mask ventilation is successful, proceed to step 2, laryngoscopy and tracheal intubation using direct or video laryngoscopy. Nasal oxygen using oxygen flow of 15 liters per minute or high flow nasal cannula oxygen should be continued. The choice of laryngoscopy depends on availability of resources and expertise. Do not exceed more than two attempts at intubation and repeat an attempt only if the oxygen saturation is above 95%. Mask ventilation should be performed between attempts. Optimize position, use external laryngeal manipulations, partially or completely release the cricoid pressure to optimize the laryngoscopic view if required and use a bougie or stillet if required. Between attempts at intubation, consider changing the device or technique rather than repeating the same technique. Maintain depth of anesthesia throughout the intubation attempts. After intubation, confirm proper endotracheal tube position using capnography along with clinical methods. If mask ventilation is not possible, immediately call for help. A single attempt at intubation could be made provided the saturation is above 95%. Once successful, confirm the tracheal intubation using capnography and clinical methods. If two attempts at intubation fail or after a single attempt at intubation following unsuccessful mass ventilation fails, the scenario is identified as failed intubation. We move to step 3. Let's try out supraglottic airway devices. Nasal oxygen using oxygen flow of 15 liters per minute or high flow nasal cannula oxygen should be continued during supraglottic airway insertion. Insert a supraglottic device, preferably a second generation one and ventilate to maintain oxygenation. Not more than two attempts should be made to insert a supraglottic device and only if the saturation is above 95%. Perform mass ventilation between attempts. Consider using a different type or size of supraglottic device during the second attempt. Maintain the depth of anesthesia throughout the insertion attempts. Once supraglottic device insertion is successful and oxygenation is maintained, consider performing a percutaneous or surgical tracheostomy for further airway management. Intubation through the supraglottic device may be considered but only under vision using a flexible fiber optic bronchoscope. If ventilation through the supraglottic device fails, move to step 4. Rescue face mask ventilation. Continue nasal oxygenation using oxygen flow of 15 liters per minute or high flow nasal cannula oxygen. Ensure complete neuromuscular blockade. Repeat a muscle relaxant if required. Give one final attempt at face mask ventilation using optimal technique and adjuncts. If rescue face mask ventilation is successful, proceed with a percutaneous or surgical tracheostomy. However, if rescue face mask ventilation is unsuccessful, there is complete ventilation failure. Continue nasal oxygen using oxygen flow at 15 liters per minute or high flow nasal cannula oxygen and call for additional help. Here are the options available. Emergency front of neck access provides a last resort life saving route for the invasive oxygenation of the patients. Adequate forward planning as well as recognition of at-risk patients is critical to avoidance of cannot intubate, cannot oxygenate CICO situations. Multiple strategies exist for performing emergency front of neck access and much debate exists as to which strategy is superior. All airway practitioners should be trained in at least one method of emergency front of neck access as it may be required in unfamiliar environments at any time. It is often the case that 
front of neck axis is performed too late and a great emphasis has been placed on promoting a timely performance of the procedure. There is some debate within literature as to the benefits of conversion to tracheostomy particularly in the case of surgical cricothyroidotomy. However, standard practice remains to convert within 24 to 72 hours. Once the airway has been secured, the team needs to discuss post-procedure plan. Treat airway edema if suspected. Watch out for possible complications by reassessing the patient and vitals. Counseling regarding the airway interventions undertaken and proper documentation are important. It is necessary to implement an intubation protocol during routine airway management in the ICU. Adherence to a plan for difficult airway management incorporating the use of intubation aids and airway rescue devices and strategies is useful. Here's the summary. Thanks for watching. Your comments and suggestions are most welcome. Until we meet next time, it's goodbye from Senish.